Hello, this is Jay Goldstein of the Local and State History Department at the Cumberland County Public Library. As a part of this multi-part series, we will be meeting with Paul Peoples of the United States Marine Corps Historical Company to discuss Lieutenant General John Archer Lejeune and the United States Marine Corps. All peoples from the United States Marine Corps Historical Company here in the Visitor Center of the North Carolina Veterans Park. Major General Lejeune will be appointed to become 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps in 1920. He will serve in that capacity until 1929. He faces numerous challenges as Commandant. One of them is the rapid downsizing of the Marine Corps. By 1921, the Marine Corps will have gone from peak World War I strength of 74,000 to about 17,000. During his tenure as Commandant, he will also face other commitments coming up uh, there will be crises in China in the late 1920s that will have marine units sent over there. There will also be deployments to Nicaragua. Marines will go into Nicaragua in 1926 and they will not leave until 1933. Additionally, on two separate occasions during his tenure as Commandant, a series of robberies of mail trains will lead to United States Marines being detailed to protect the U.S. mails. Each one of these occasions is going to require over 2,000 Marines to secure the mail trains. Also, what Lejeune will do during this time is he has many accomplishments um, during his tenure. Some of them will include making these marine units more permanent than provisional. We've seen through the late 19th and early 20th centuries these various units being put together, they deploy, and then they're disbanded. He makes more of these units permanent. Also, based on his experience during the World War, he improves the logistic and support infrastructure of the Marine Corps. He preserves the existing Marine bases that have been established at Quantico, Virginia, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot that's at Paris Island, South Carolina, and he will also see the establishment of a West Coast Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego. He will help uh, refine uh, the training and education of both officers and enlisted Marines during this time. Commandant Lejeune will also preserve the Marine Corps' aviation, which had been built up greatly during the Great War, and they will end up pioneering what is now called close air support during their time in Nicaragua. Closer support for the Marines that are there as well as, as resupplying uh, Marines on the ground. Also, Lejeune will focus on refining the doctrine, tactics, techniques, procedures, and equipment for amphibious operations. The highlight of this will be in 1927 where the Marine Corps is formally given the mission to provide forces to seize advanced naval bases in future campaigns. This is, is major and it will lay the foundations for the modern Fleet Marine Force which will be formed in 1933. Lejeune will also focus on 
promoting the history and traditions of the Marine Corps. In 1921, he will designate 10 November 1775, the formation date of the Continental Marines, as the official birth date of the United States Marine Corps. He will publish a birthday message in November of 1921, which is still read annually throughout the Marine Corps. Another one of his lasting legacies is the formation of the Marine Corps League, a fraternal Marine organization in 1923. Lejeune will retire from the Marine Corps in 1929. He will work as superintendent of the Virginia Military Institute until 1937. Lejeune will get to see the expansion again of the Marine Corps. By the time that Lejeune had retired as Commandant, the Marine Corps was back down to a strength of about 14,000. With the outbreak of war in Europe again in 1939, the Marine Corps will increase, and by 1941, it will be up to 65,000. Also in 1941, two Marine Corps divisions will be formed. The 1st Marine Division will be activated at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, in a ceremony held on the deck of the battleship USS Texas that's anchored there. The second Marine Division will be formed in San Diego. Also, the Marine Corps picks two new facilities for these expanded forces. One of them will be in the New River area of southeastern North Carolina. There will be landing exercises conducted there in 1941 with both the 1st Marine Division and the U.S. Army's 1st Infantry Division. In 1942, the 1st Marine Division will deploy from North Carolina and go to the South Pacific and land on the island of Guadalcanal in 1942. These events are the validation of General Lejeune's vision, all the groundwork that had been laid looking into amphibious warfare and defining the roles and mission of the Marine Corps. Lejeune will be promoted to Lieutenant General on the retired list in 1942 and then he will pass away 20 November 1942. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to tune in in the coming weeks for more episodes of this series. Have a wonderful day.